Hello, and welcome to the Sea of Thieves 2022 preview event, where we're going to give you a first look at some of the new and exciting things coming to Sea of Thieves this year. We're going to be hearing from some of the members of the team here at Rare as they take you through our ambitious new plans for telling stories within the Sea of Thieves and how we plan to make the seas feel more alive than ever. So stick around as we plot out the epic voyages ahead and delve deep into what's in store for Sea of Thieves in 2022. Hello everyone. It's incredible to say that Sea of Thieves is bigger than ever. We've had over 25 million players play the game and we recently announced that over 5 million players have purchased the game on Steam. We started with the launch of Seasons back in January, which seems like such a long time ago now, and then went through to June where we revealed a pirate's life and released that uh, into our world. And it was such a great moment for us as a development team to keep it secret, to keep it a real surprise, to be able to introduce those characters and those stories into our world and for it to just be so seamless and such a, such a magical moment. We added new creatures and enemies for you to encounter in the Sea of Thieves world, like the Phantoms, these new characters that have crossed over from the spectral realm of the Sea of the Damned. Crustacean-like ocean crawlers, each with new abilities, and of course, the shadowy sirens from the underwater world of the Sunken Kingdom. And players got to experience the Sunken Kingdom for themselves, diving down deep below the waves, exploring these mysterious siren shrines, each with their own look, identity, and mysteries to unravel. And then with Season 5, we had our Tools Not Rules update, where we introduced so many different mechanics um, that have just really kind of enriched the whole sandbox. And we've seen so many great stories from, from all of our players with everything that we introduced with that. You know, what that means is really that Sea of Thieves has never been in a better place. And, and we think there's a real opportunity to do things differently as we move forward. Seasons have been an incredible framework for us in which to add new experiences and content to Sea of Thieves. And alongside that, we've been running numerous live events throughout the year. With all that said, we still feel like there's something missing. We want to make the Sea of Thieves world feel like a richer, more dynamic place where every time you play, there's always something new to discover and new adventures to embark upon. So we're going to be evolving and expanding how we update the game. So alongside Seasons, as they are now, we're introducing two new ways that we'll be updating the game. Adventures and Mysteries. So firstly, Adventures are story-driven live events. And these are released on a regular basis of one per month, typically lasting around two weeks. Crucially, Adventures are a chapter in an overarching story that's unfolding within Sea of Thieves. Adventures will be more cinematic and it will be a chance for players to immerse themselves in the world and the story of Sea of Thieves more and have more of an emotional attachment to the characters in Sea of Thieves. We want to appeal to players' hearts, uh, get them to care about these places, get them to care about these characters because when they are put in situations of trouble, players will feel compelled to act. You'll want to help out, you'll want to save them. We want to make players feel like they're part of this story, basically. It's happening to the existing world, uh, which has been really good from an environment point of view because we're, we're touching areas that haven't been touched in a long time. Things are changing and things are happening within the world. It, make, it kind of makes it feel alive. Part of the way that we'll be telling this story is through ongoing cinematic lore trailers the first of which you'll see later in this preview event. Each season also features a special adventure, a finale, that brings several story elements to a thrilling conclusion before the story then moves on in a new direction. And crucially, in key adventures, the community will be responsible for the outcome of that story. Based on their actions and the choice they side with, the outcome of that story will be changed and the world will change forever. And that will become part of the ongoing storyline for Sea of Thieves. This is very much about players being at the heart of their ongoing storytelling in Sea of Thieves and being responsible for moving the world forwards. So mysteries are also something that we're super excited about. So these are gonna be stories that players are gonna to have to work together to uncover. And this will happen kind of in game and out of game uh, in terms of clues being released and that they will evolve kind of over a longer time period than a typical adventure will because we're going to be kind of 
you know, teasing and hinting and, and looking at how people are solving this. Are people figuring this stuff out? When's the right time to move this forward? But based on players really uncovering the kind of next stages of these mysteries, we've already seen little bits of this with some of the little stuff we've done in the past, like the runes and things. Um, but this is going to be taken that to another level entirely. We've been looking at other media, we've been looking at films, we've been looking at episodic TV, we've been looking at books and how they can tell compelling mysteries over time. And we've really been inspired by those. And we see certain genres fitting really well in terms of mystery telling. So you've got murder mysteries, whodunits, ghost stories, certainly take inspiration from those kind of mysteries in other media. I can't say too much about the stories we're going to expect from mysteries, but I will say this. The first mystery is going to be involving players solving the murder of a well-known character in Sea of Thieves, so it's really exciting. We've heard the feedback about our previous live events, and for us this is about making them a key part of the ongoing Sea of Thieves story. The best way to think about it is that seasons and the content within is now going to be explained by part of this story. The adventures and the mystery collectively form the ongoing Sea of Thieves storyline, with players at the heart of that unfolding narrative. Seasons run every three months, roughly, and they introduce new mechanics, progression, new rewards, a uh, new Pirate Emporium, new Plunder Pass, uh, and the Emissary Ledgers are reset. So Season 6, which kicks off in March, introduces a new mini raid experience which is introduced by the way of sea forts. There'll be six sea forts around the Sea of Thieves and in the sea forts players will be able to battle phantoms and sea fort captains in order to unlock the treasury and all the rewards inside. Unlike the forts that already exist in the game which are there to bring multiple crews together, sea forts are there to provide a more personal experience. So if you're playing by yourself or if you're playing with your crew, and you can see a C4 active, you're not necessarily going to shy away from it. You know, as a challenge, it will be pitched towards you. So these forts are brought through from memories from Sea of the Damned. So it's going to be really nice to see that again, because it's a big breakaway from what you're used to in Sea of Thieves, where everything's a bit more ramshackled and wooden and brought about from shipwrecks and such. And there's three different types that we'll see in different seas. So in the wilds, there's prison-themed forts. Um, these ones kind of are really gloomy and they have a lot of kind of chains and cages. That's been really cool from a storytelling point of view. Um, we have really overgrown, abandoned forts. They've just been reclaimed by nature, basically. So they're completely overgrown, they're crumbling, um, and they've been ransacked. And then we've got the more kind of standard Spanish forts that you would expect to see directly from the Sea of the Damned. When we're making these forts, we have to make good considerations into the playable space. We want it to look really well decorated, yet at the same time be functional as a playable area. So we've got lots of open space. There's quite a few choke points as well, so players can use that to their advantage and, you know, stack up those phantoms and really, you know, make use of your local environment to have the upper edge. And then we'll use more kind of detail and concentrate the dressing in between these areas, which is kind of like a breadcrumbing technique to bring players from one area to the next, which means that they don't get lost easily. It still keeps the environment interesting while ensuring that they can still navigate properly and fight. Ultimately, the reason why these sea forts, these naval stone sea forts, have found their way from the Sea of the Damned into the Sea of Thieves will be explained as part of our overarching story that's going to unfold throughout the rest of the year. We're also going to be introducing new pirate legend voyages which are replayable, that will be different every time. They have a mix of challenges in there, so players can replay them as often as they like and it will be something fresh and exciting each time. Whether that's using new maps to uncover treasures, diving into the depths to explore shipwreck graveyards or exploring onto haunted islands. Again, this is a big element of the ongoing grand story that we're going to be telling throughout 2022, with Pirate Legends being responsible for this part of the story. I think the big thing about adventures and mysteries coming into the game is being able to, at regular cadence, push the story forward, pushing characters and their storylines, their narrative forward, pushing the state of the world forward based on where the story is going, based on what players are doing within the story to push that narrative forward. It should help to make the world feel far more dynamic. 
But alongside all of these amazing things that we're going to be introducing to the Sea of Thieves, we also know that there are questions, there, are, there is feedback that we have around certain areas of the existing game. Hit registration, which we know is an ongoing um, kind of question and concern. Spawn camping or the solo experience or even kind of lost data and lost progress when we have moments of issues with our, with our live service. And so we're going to be doing a Sea of Thieves podcast specifically to talk about the kind of main hot topics that are ongoing as part of the Sea of Thieves community. So that's going to become up fairly soon. I think we'll have a date hopefully running across the, the screen right now. But we really want to take the time to talk about that in depth and at length. So with our ambitious plans for the future, we are as committed as ever to make adventure the best experience it can possibly be. The goal with all of this is to make the Sea of Thieves feel like an ever-evolving dynamic place where there's always secrets to discover, new experiences to have and new adventures to embark upon. We're so excited and we're more ambitious than ever for our plans throughout this year and beyond for adventure. So in order to make the adventure mode as magical as it can be, we've had to reassess where we are going to be spending our time as we look forward. Part of that is redirecting our development efforts from elsewhere to ensuring that we're making the improvements that matter to adventure. So as a result of this and with our plans in mind for the future, we've made the difficult decision to close Arena in Sea of Thieves, and it will be closing during season six. It's pretty clear to us that majority of our players love to spend their time in adventure, and that comes across in, in, the, in the kind of data and the time spent in, in Arena itself. It's about 2% of our overall playtime is spent in Arena, with the rest being uh, spent in adventure. So ultimately, it's pretty clear to us where the majority of our community, the majority of our players want us to spend our development time. Uh, and that is continuing to enrich the world of adventure, continuing to deliver amazing stories and moments and mechanics to our, you know, our ever-growing community. We'd like to take this opportunity to thank our incredibly passionate Arena community for showcasing that part of Sea of Thieves. And we thank you for all your support on the journey so far. You'll be able to read more about this on our website but let me just say again, this has been an incredibly difficult decision for us to make, but it's all about making Sea of Thieves the best experience it can possibly be, and that we're directing all of our efforts towards making the game as unique and special as possible. So following the events of A Pirate's Life, with that mysterious castaway coming to the Sea of Thieves world and opening a way to the Sea of the Damned, allowing pirates to adventure inside, this has been seen by all of their major characters in the Sea of Thieves world. And in many ways, this has started a magical arms race between the forces of a renewed Captain Flameheart and the Pirate Lord himself. The nefarious forces that wish to do evil in the Sea of Thieves, they seek to control the Sea of the Damned to destroy the veil between these two pirate worlds and to bring them together. So let's take a first look at the cinematic trailer for our first adventure, Shrouded Islands. The Sea of Thieves is a wondrous place where there are always new stories to tell. Like the turning of the tide, all of that could change. I can feel it in my bones. Evil is stirring. The Sea of Thieves is once again under threat. Flameheart seeks to regain his power. We must do all that we can to weather this storm. Only together can we protect what we all hold dear. Are you done? Sit down, Ramsay. I'll handle this.
So our first adventure, Shrouded Islands, is coming to Sea of Thieves February 17th, and it's just the start of a bigger, grander story that we're introducing to Sea of Thieves as part of this. And to show you why we're so excited, we're gonna take a close look now at our first adventure, Shrouded Islands. So as you saw there in our cinematic trailer, Shrouded Islands centers on golden sands, and this mysterious fog that has rolled in. Players will be able to explore and abandon Golden Sands, learning more about what happened there. So at this point in time, when the first adventure starts, we'll see that Flameheart has ominously retreated after all of this time in the Sea of Thieves. And at the same time, spectral activity is increasing. So one of the first things you'll see when you're taking part of these adventures is you're going to have Lorena speaking to you. You're going to have Lorena asking you to help out. And she is going to be sending you out to investigate Golden Sands, first of all. This is obviously the biggest threat on the Sea of Thieves right now. Golden Sands, the significant trading outpost, has been engulfed in this fog. Its inhabitants are missing. And Lorena is going to task you, first of all, to investigate. If you're looking for adventure, I'll fill you in on all you need to know. As an environment artist, it's great fun to go into an area and destroy it basically um, but it is one of the most kind of vibrant well-loved islands in the game so when you're doing it you're sort of like oh god what am i doing to this place but at the same time it was kind of the perfect island to do it to because it was so perfect and well loved everyone that is the outpost what i really like about changing something that is pre-existing in the sea of thieves is that you can add history to an already existing area when it comes to somewhere like golden sands you can sort of play at the uh, player's emotions because they love that area i mean I, I love that outpost it's going to be a bit painful to see it in such a devastating state there's clear evidence that there's been a battle taking place and it's quite obvious that the people, the inhabitants of the island did not win that battle. Um, they have vacated the island and this ghostly fog, the fog of the damned has come and settled in over the island. Everything's very eerie, mysterious and we really wanted to convey that kind of, that real mystery of what has happened here. This is not like a normal battle scene. And you can see that they've tried to defend themselves and it's not gone well. One of the key points for me is the tavern sign outside the tavern has just fallen down and split in two. And I think that really symbolizes just the state that the outpost is in at this point. For this first story and this, this uh, adventure, I think the sort of tone and emotion we were trying to convey was foreboding. So for these sort of shrouded islands with the Fog of the Damned, we've used the fog music that we already have, but we've introduced these other elements with a day and night cycle to it as well. So we've sort of incorporated that into the music as, as well and used this, this theme that we've created for Adventure One. The adventure will take you across multiple other locations that are also engulfed in fog. And you will encounter phantoms, including a new phantom type that we're calling the Soul Flame Captain. He's a fearsome threat, and you will need to use the environment around you to take it on. I asked Chloe if she would be interested in writing some music for the Soul Flame Captains. <laughs> and she was completely, as always, up to the challenge. She's used that first theme that we've, we've been sort of framing the whole adventure one in, but she's really cleverly sort of weaved it into her combat music. And it's a lot of complicated sort of time signatures and even the chords that are sort of syncopated are calling out that theme. It's really nicely done. But it's, and it's got that pace and sort of urgency. So Belle has been in the Sea of Thieves world and stories for some time, but this is her first appearance within the game. And she comes from the Sea of the Damned. And unlike many of her characters, she's been around for hundreds of years. She's seen so many things within the spectral realm of the Sea of the Damned. And now she has taken this chance to help the Pirate Lord against this new threat from Captain Flameheart. She has this necklace around her neck, which certain players might have noticed if you've got a keen eye. And that has a symbol on it which ties her into the Ferry of Damned. And she's appeared right now because there's a time of great need. The Pirate Lord is in desperate need of help and she's come to save the day. <laughs> she knows so much more than she's um, letting on. 
in, in on what's going on in Sea of Thieves. So she doesn't have that kind of worldview that an ordinary pirate does. So it's, it was almost like in, what I'm trying to convey with her theme was just sort of wondrous and quite majestic, I suppose, as well. And it's just this kind of as old as time theme I was trying to convey, I suppose, really. Are you done? Sit down, Ramsay. I'll handle this. We're really excited to be able to start this long narrative that's going to be an epic tale for players to experience. There's going to be cinematic moments, there's going to be lots of lore and narrative to get involved with, and this is just the start, really, of what's going to be a really exciting year for Sea of Thieves. It's going to be a real game changer. I think for me, the most exciting thing about adventures is this opportunity to tell an ongoing story at a regular cadence. We can tell a story that will give you those emotional highs, give you those emotional lows, make you want to come back to find out where that story is going. It will make players feel at the heart of this progression of the world of Sea of Thieves. And also, players will be able to look back after the time see the scars of these stories, they will continue to exist as well, and players will be able to remember their place in the history of Sea of Thieves, as well as wanting to know where it goes next. Our plans for the immediate future are incredibly exciting, with new adventures, ongoing mysteries, and exciting new experiences coming to the Sea of Thieves world. So as we look to the future of Sea of Thieves, we are all in on this new approach with the existing seasons, but then doubling down with the adventures and the mysteries, but also continuing to evolve the world and evolve the mechanics that are there. So new ways to progress and new tools. And we really believe that the, the future of Sea of Thieves over the next year and beyond uh, is going to be incredibly exciting for us and for, for all of our players. We hope you enjoyed this first look at what we have planned for Sea of Thieves in 2022. With adventures, mysteries and seasons, the Sea of Thieves will feel more alive than ever and give you even more ways to play. And there's still plenty to share about what's coming throughout the rest of the year, but we'll save that for another time. Until then, keep a weather eye on the horizon and I'll see you on the seas.